Hello there, welcome to my channel. I have another haul, I suppose it is, from um, Wool Warehouse this time, and I think this is the first time I am showing things bought from Wool Warehouse. <laughs> so I found this website um, a wee while ago, and it was mainly to get some um, needles and a few spare things from Likey, like the I wanted to get another 4mm set from them and um, for my interchangeable um, set that I bought and I also wanted to get a few more things that I can't remember but I'm not going to show those because I don't know if people would be interested in the small acquisitions but as you're going along and learning stuff you realise that you do need a few bits and bobs um, and um, these are a combination of two orders this is the first order with the brushed alpaca here and then I made another order with the Pluto Lopi, I think it's called. Um, so I'll show these first. And um, these are basically brushed alpaca, alpaca silk. Um, and it's basically a blend of... Um, let's see, it's a blend of 77% alpaca and 23% silk. It is... It's, it's actually, I'm not, I think it's an iron weight, which is again um, a wee bit surprising, and um, cause surprising to me because the strand seems quite thin. Um, it's recommended five millimeter needle, and the gauge is ten times ten. For yeah, ten times ten on the five. Yeah. No, sorry, it's 17 stitches times 24 rows. What am I looking at? Um, for a 10 by 10 swatch. That's what it is. I'm sorry if I'm a bit slow today. I do not feel too well. I do have a lot of fatigue issues. And they're showing up today. Now this one, let me see what colour it was. I believe this was off-white. I bought um, alpaca silk from Knitted Home. Um, yeah. I think it was my first order actually that I showed on this channel and I do like it but I do know that I'll, I don't see myself knitting with this on its own I would be holding this together with another um, another yarn and I feel like the colours that I've bought today and I'll go through them one by one are, are quite complementary to the yarns I've brought from really knit but yeah so this is off white and it's a lovely shade I hope it's um, coming through. On the camera it seems okay, but it's a very dull day. Although I am beside a window in natural light, so I hope it does come through. It's a creamy shade to me, quite creamy. Um, hints of oatmeal in there, but light. It's not, it's not beige. It's definitely more creamy than beige. Okay, this is um, curry, so I remember this shade. And um, I bought this to go with either cinnamon from Really Knit or Harvest from Really Knit. I think it would be nice for both. This is a gorgeous shade. It's a mustard yellow. Um, I think it's coming up as such in the camera. Um, and it does feel like a mustard yellow in my hand. It's actually a wee bit more richer in my hand than, than is coming up in the camera. I have seen, um, so I found <laughs> a website um, that has really, really good patterns on it. It's called um, Yarnspiration. And I have downloaded quite a few free patterns off there for, mostly for beginners. And um, they, they have this recommendation level, like difficult, intermediate, beginners, easy. And mostly for beginners and easy. Um, because, like I said, knitting is... It hasn't come easy to me, but I'll talk about it at the end. Um, just letting you know where I'm at. But this website was really, really good. And um, I've been browsing a lot more online. And I found a few recommendations from, I think it was people's podcasts. Not, or just uh, channels of a website called Ravelry. Uh, which is also really good. I am finding my way around that. I've got an account made. Um, although I did find the patterns on Yarnspiration that kind of 
at least that kind of um, filtering and finding, trying to find what I need a lot more easier on your inspiration actually. But I am browsing Ravelry and I have a few um, patterns saved in my favourites. And one of them is something called the Ranunculus. And someone has made the Ranunculus in this shade. It's absolutely stunning. And I am so, like, <laughs> I really wish I would come to that point where I can make something like that. I know it's far in the future still. Um, but, oh my god, that garment in the shade on top of a black dress was just stunning. And I, and I really hope that one day I can make or create something like that. But going on to this shade, this was Rust. Now, Rust to me online was, was a burnt orange. Like, I was hoping to combine that with cinnamon or even with some of my um, brownier shades. But I can't explain it. This is in the orange family, maybe even the burnt orange family. But I mean, on the camera, it's coming up almost as a grapey maroon. It's not, it is much more of a, of a, I suppose it is a rusty shade, um, but it's not burnt orange. It's not that kind of uh, deep rich orange. There's a, there's a mutedness to this, um, a dullness almost. Uh, and considering how difficult it is to kind of capture that on camera, because I can see it's coming across slightly more maroony. That than what it is. I, I can understand why it's not maybe portrayed that way on the website. But um, it's still a lovely shade. It will go f absolutely well with cinnamon. Um, cinnamon brown from um, Really Knit, which is what I bought it from. And even with um, the Aran 400g uh, cone that I got from Really Knit, which was in Rust Tan, I actually got that for um, to go with that initially but it is quite different. I maybe should have brought that over. I might do that at the end. I might just do a comparison of those two at the end to see. Like I said I am a bit a bit tired today so excuse me if I've not got everything prepared. So this is something um, that I bought again. Um, my first order from Uli Knit was for this. This is light beige. This is beautiful. I bought so I bought five each of each of these shades and I'm about four of this at the start so I've got nine of these and I'm really hoping to combine this with either dark grey natural from Really Knit um, or the chestnut brown cone from Really Knit both chestnut brown and dark grey natural are 500 gram um, British wool cones and I think that shade is I mean I love those shades because they're just the staples I want in my wardrobe so, as long as a few others, cinnamon and you know harvest and um, the green field and the na Nazareth, um, and even the Nazareth, Nazareth. I can't ever say that name. Um, Nazareth. Even that shade would go with this very, very well. I, probably out of all the three shades I've mentioned, the dark grey natural, the chestnut brown, and Nazareth, this would go with Nazareth the most. But I do want to create a cardigan, or even a jumper. So I'm saving um, this quantity for that. But it is very beautiful. Let's see if I can get some of these nice close-up comparisons. Okay, uh, now this shade, this is Bordeaux. This is a really deep wine, um, burgundy shade. And it's, it was bought to either pair with a burgundy. I don't think I will be prepared um, Pairing it with a burgundy because I've got plans for that um, in something else. But um, the 500 gram merino wool cone in Rioja wine is the one that I want to pair this with. And again, I will probably do a wee bit of a comparison um, at the end to see. But this is, let's try to focus on this. Yeah, a lovely. It's got hints of blue in it, but it's a very rich wine shade. Very nice shade. Yep, and this one here is light grey. 
I just bought this because I thought it was a ni nice neutral shade. I've got two shades now that this would go with. One of them is the Saddleworth Mist. I have that in DK weight. That is actually a very nice shade that I look back on that. It's grey and I know grey isn't like something, at least steely grey isn't too much what I go for but um, I like it. So it's 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 got that warmth to it from the pink. I think this paired with that would go very well. I think it would go well with Skidon Nip as well. Although to be honest the 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 off white would probably go more better with the Skidon Nip. I don't see why this can't go with um dark grey natural as well. There is enough of grey in that to to make these quite complementary to each other. But yep, that is light grey. It seems very light when I'm comparing it to the um, Bordeaux shade. Um, it's probably more of this type of grey that you can see now. Let's see what's like when it's compared. It's ha funny how shades become so much lighter and darker when you put them against something else. So yeah, that is probably the most accurate, I would say. It is a lovely, lovely grey. Okay, and this was one order of yarn, and this was a second order. I bought this Pluto Lopi. It's called. It's called. It's from the company. Um, let me just put this on top. Hold on. It's from the company Istex Lopi. I think it's called. And this is their Pluto Lopi yarn. It's unspun. Uh, I, if you've probably seen it all night, it can break quite easily. It's 100 grams, and 100 grams equals 300 meters. And it's Icelandic wool. And this is the shade. Marsh Green and Lopi has, whenever I look online for Lopi, it's always out of stock, always out of stock, everywhere. The shades that I'm really wanting to use in Lopi are Oatmeal Heather. Um, I want to see some of their, um, oh, what's that, Dark Woods is another one that I really want to get. I mean, those those shades look absolutely scrumptious. Um, I can see myself really liking them. Um, there's another one, I think Frost Bite or Frost Green. Um, is it Black Sheep Heather? There's a few ones that really, really caught my eye and I thought, okay, these are going to be amazing, but they're just totally out of stock everywhere. And when you look at some of the websites where um, they tell you when it's going to come back in stock, it's, it's in like March 2022, so you're like, okay then. So these were, this uh, marsh green was one of the few that was in stock and I love this shade. Obviously it's got, it's a shade that's similar to Greenfield because um, it's got the, it's got the olive green in it, it's got the, it's got hints of turquoise now that I can see in the camera actually, which is pretty cool. It's got bark green almost here. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like a tinge of lime green here somewhere. <laughs> These are amazing. This is, I mean, I, this is the kind of colours that I love. And I just think when this, hopefully anyway, when this is knitted up, it's just um, the effect it gives. I don't think it's comparable to something that it's just one block colour. Um, like, you know some of the merino, I think the superwash type of shades, or the shades that I bought from Home Bargain and um, where was it? Aldi and stuff, which is just the one block shade. It, this is they are nothing compared to like something like this. So if I was to say that, I would say that's like a between an olive green and a bark brown like a tree bark brown. It does, this does remind me of a tree bark. <laughs> and it's got hints of uh, turquoise and lime in there. And um, the overall effect is a, is a type of mossy green, maybe. I think marsh green is quite accurate. It's a, it's a good name for this. 
this is the bit of the side. This is stunning. I bought six of these, no, seven? Six or seven. And um, I'm hoping it's going to be enough for a, a jumper weight or a cardigan uh, quantity. I am a bit of a bigger size. I have never made a garment like that, so I'm not even sure how many rolls it takes from someone like me. Um, who is a larger size, so we'll see when I start this. Um, yeah, so that's something I'm learning about how much to buy for the garment, um, the type of garment I had intended it for. But uh, if I hold this with something, I hope I can make it on a bigger needle, so maybe something like a 6mm or even a 7 and there's plenty of shades that I've got that I can hold this hold this with. I can hold it with a strand of Greenfield, um, even Nazareth I could hold it with, Dark Grey Natural. I don't know if I'd hold it with a chestnut brown because that's quite a warm shade. It's a very reddy brown. And this has blues in it. I could probably like hold it with one of, yeah, probably with one of those shades as well. Maybe the, the, the light. I, think, I can't remember what this is called. Is it light beige or brown beige? I think this is just called beige. But yeah. Lovely, lovely bit of wool there. So I wanted to talk about how I got on. Um, I was finding it very difficult to knit in the round. I just could not um, join. Each time I thought I joined, um, <laughs> I wasn't joined, <laughs> basically, and um, I I cast on the drop swish in grey beige. That's the colour um, I showed in the, my first yarn haul, I believe. And I was doing a pattern that I found online. I think it was Ravelry, actually, this one. Although you had to go on the on the webs on a different website to actually download the pattern, and it's called the Christchurch beanie beanie hat and it was using a gauge that was exactly what the wish gauge was coming up to and for the wish yarn this is i'll just show you the bits of the wish yarn i've got left it um it says to use nine millimeter needles but when i was casting on on a cable with nine this was so loose and this yarn is so so soft and so slippy that it's difficult to actually um make the cast on stitches tight and I was finding it very very difficult. I frogged this <sighs> I am not kidding you, I am not exaggerating, I probably frogged it about 20 plus times and it's a testament to this yarn that I didn't get the kinks <laughs> it's actually a very nice yarn um, now that I managed to get it um, you know start working with it and in the end I managed to, I, I, I was kept on um, taking it off the cable needles and putting on straight needles but the straight needles because this was already knitted up it was so loose the gauge didn't look nice um, there was lots of holes in it and another thing that I could not get was the twisting this was so soft that I could not hold these like in my hand to untwist them when I joined it and um, the few times I managed to join them um, it was basically twisted um, and you can only I can only tell that after about three or four rows. I mean, I'm so new at this. <laughs> I just can't understand how people like you know just take to knitting so quickly. It's taken me almost a year. I mean, I picked up the needles. What was it? March to f learn the freaking knit stitch, and it took me almost four or five months just to learn one stitch. <sighs> but I am getting there. I think different things come to different people at different times and for some reason knitting isn't coming to me quick. It wasn't, but like I said, I am going to keep at this, this is something I want to do. And I managed to join in the round for this hat and I managed to get the right needle gauge and I have got something here now. <laughs> So this is probably so amateur to some of you people that are watching and know how to knit, but I am so proud of this. 
So what I did here was I managed the okay, so the way I managed to join in the round was taking the stitch from the first stitch. So the last stitch and the first stitch and holding them together, putting this over here, and then stitching in both of them. And that kind of just joined in the round. I do not know if that's the right way to do it. Um it's a bit hard stitching through two, but that's the way I did it. I could I cannot I don't know what it is, maybe it's like the fact that I'm partially sighted half the time, or what it is, I cannot follow some of the tutorials online, even when it's so slow. Um, which is when when I do find a really good tutorial that's really slowed it down, then I always save it and go back to it. But um, yeah, I just couldn't understand, and I was so tired of doing this again and again that I almost put just quit it. But I'm thinking, nope. I've got too much yarn, I've bought too much yarn to quit. So I managed to join it in the round and I think one of the reasons why I was able to do that and not get the, um, the rows twisted was because I actually um, cast on on a 5mm needle and I bought these needles and I bought this cable because that was another thing, the cable was too long. The light key cables and the shortest ones are 60 centimeters, and for a hat that's slightly too big. And I was looking online, um, so tired at this point, and realised that I needed to get, um, I think, 40, yeah, sorry, 40 centimetre cables. And um, Likey doesn't have that inter interchangeable. I think they do have it in, uh, it's, um, it's fixed circulars. Yeah, they had it in the fixed circles. I didn't want to buy fixed circulars, not yet, anyway. Um, I think interchangeable just gives you that, that, do you know the, the, the variety um, so I bought this is Knit Pro and um, I bought the Knit Pro normals in 4mm and 5mm with a 4cm cable and I got that the same time as my um, ball winder from Woolstack and then I bought these these are 8mm from um, yeah, Wool Warehouse and um, these are the Cubics so what I did was the actual pattern says to do knit stitch but use a smaller needle um, and then go on to a bigger needle after about 6 centimeters. Now I don't have um, this yarn, even though 9 millimeters is recommended, I feel like the gauge is just, I mean the swatch is too loose. So I decided I'm going to make this on an 8 millimeter. But I didn't have a 7mm um, needle to do the rim that I cast on for. So, uh, and I can't, I mean, I probably will buy 7mm, but there's so many things that you have to buy just to get a pattern straight. It's kind of frustrating. Um, so I cast on on a 5mm and I knitted up to about, I think it's about here. It's about 3.5cm, 4cm. And then I swapped to my 8mm. Which wasn't easy because the these uh, these stitches were so tight. Um, so basically, what I did was I swapped this uh, right. No, this is actually the right one. The right one to an eight millimeter and kept this five. I mean, I did the whole round and I just swapped that into an eight millimeter as well. Um, another thing I have found invaluable um, because what would kept on happening was if I put the if I put the piece down and I. I put the piece down and picked it up again. I couldn't remember when it was, um, what side it was. So I would be knitting the wrong way around, and I couldn't tell until I saw. Oh no, that do you know this? Um, was this bit? Um, I had a stitch marker here, and it was going the wrong way, and I was like, oh no. So what I've done, and it's so important for me for any garment that I've cast on now, is I use these. Um, they're from Clover. They're basically the needle toppers. And for me, the purple needle, the purple topper is always on the right needle. So this goes in my right hand when I pick it up, this one. And the green topper is on the left needle. And that goes in my left hand when I pick it up. So I know I'm working this way. And like I said, I don't know how people do it, uh, know the, the professional editors do it, but this is, I, I need to do that. Otherwise, I just do not know which way my fabric is going. And yeah, so this is the grey beige um, drops wish 
it is very very nice knitted up however if there's any bits of grey uh, beige in it have uh, totally gone this is uh, definitely a uh, grey a pure almost daily grey I would say um, and the way because the uh, the brim is red knitted on the five millimeters it's kind of going up which I absolutely love and you're getting the garter stitch underneath um, so for the pattern, I'm going to put the pattern down, hopefully just down there, um, so you can see which, which one it was I used. The pattern um, said that I needed one ball or one skein of about 80 or 90 meters. And this was more than enough in terms of skein, but because maybe of the needles I've used in the gauge, it's totally run out. <laughs> um, let's see how much I've got left here. So not much. It's about this much left. Um, so I am going to have to make another order um, and at the same time I'm going to order one more of the sea green um, because I bought I only bought one of both of these the sea green and the grey beige and I want to make both of them into a hat now this hat so I've got about I would want to do maybe about this much more like yep and then start decreasing I do like a bit of slouch because I like to put I like to put my hair up into my hat um, that's just the way I like it and um, yeah so I want it so I'm gonna order one more ball of this and get on with it but right now it's on hold and I've cast on another one I'll show you that in the next video with another yarn again I'll show you that in the next video now my garter stitch, you'd think that a garter stitch is simple, and I have been practicing on it, but there are mistakes. I don't know what happened here, maybe I dropped a stitch, not sure. But there are a few places like this. I try to repair them as I go on, but for me now, I've just frogged this so many times, this is not worth me frogging, I will still wear this. I know I will. <laughs> I might go back and just take a tapestry needle and sew these up. I mean, that's what I do with my sewing stuff anyway. So I don't think it should be too much of a problem. If it was something really bad and it was like uh, unraveling, then I'd probably maybe start again. But right now I am very happy with the way this is. I'm actually happy with the brim and the five millimeters. It was quite dense, but I just love that feeling. This wool is amazing. And um, I mentioned that I did buy um, a lot of wool from Home Bargains and um, just like, you know, the supermarkets because that was all I had access to. I did not know about wool um, and the stuff you can buy online, uh, about yarn, sorry, and the stuff you can buy online. And um, I just noticed because I cast on, I cast on this, um, let me put that to the side. Just a simple headband. I wanted to just get um, a feel for, you know, getting good at knitting and getting faster at knitting. And I thought that the best way to do that is just keep on doing something rectangular, straight, um, but make a garment so you, you find a sense of uh, accomplishment at the end and it's going to be motivating. So this was just a headband and um, it was helping me to do continental and that's another thing on on single point needles i can kind of do continental in my knit stitch quite well now this was really hard to do a continental on and for about a good p portion of this whole hat i just th um, did the english sewing style and it did really hurt i started hurting my um my hands <laughs> quite a lot but at one point though i don't know when it was it was on the eight millimeters i started continental I started doing the continental style and then things just went so fast and this is why I'm so glad I'm sticking at it and you know trying to push myself and a lot of it's to do with these videos as well I mean oh, I'm, I need to like tell my progress so I kept on doing it and I got really really good I got really really fast at it and um not so much mindless I was watching a few things I think that's why these <laughs> these things happened because I do still need to concentrate to some extent I can't just be watching a TV program and not be looking at my hands um, I don't watch TV I watch I watch a lot of stuff on my laptop um, and I managed to knit this in in one day that's crazy I would never have thought that I'm so so glad I'm going down this route and uh, just practicing and practicing but this was 
partly to do with so much knitting. I did a whole swatch. This is my second swatch of this. I initially cast on 60 and it was a really long one. Um, like, you know, in terms of its length, uh, its width. But I realised when I was working with this that this yarn, this huge bundle of yarn, now I don't even remember where I got this from. I think it might have been Aldi, a little. It is a massive ball of acrylic. Um, and I know why I bought it, because the, the colour is gorgeous. It's an ice blue, duck eyed blue shade. And I thought that's quite a nice shade. And I just realised that when I'm working with this, and the way this feels, and the way this is like shedding and crumpling up, and the feeling I get at the back of my throat, I just do not like it. I do not like the way this feels in my fingers, in my hand. I don't like the way this feels. This is going to be a headband. I wear a lot of headbands. And these are just um, my kind of um, progress marker. So I did, for the first day, I did up to here. Uh, and the second day, I did up to here. So I didn't do a lot um, because I was working on this uh, yesterday. But I just, I'm going to complete this and... I don't think I'm going to work with acrylic again. I don't know. The the actual yarn from um, Home Bargains isn't that bad. But this one, oh, I couldn't. It wasn't, it wasn't nice. And, um, oh my god, this video is getting so long. Okay, um, what I'll do is, like, I'll make a... I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope that was helpful. I'm sorry it gets long. I'm going to try to make these not as long. And I will probably put the comparisons that I was talking about on a next video and make it separate because this is getting a bit long um, yeah so I hope that was helpful and I will make another yarn haul oh, actually it might be a, f a fabric haul I keep on calling them hauls they're not my fabric has been in my stash for a while now I try not to buy any more fabric um, but I will be showing some uh, soon and I will be keeping up with the progress of my uh, of my knitting as well. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, bye bye.